Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Delena and you are watching Brown Girl Lux. If you have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, turn on that notification bell so you do not miss any of my uploads. If you're interested in seeing how I got this look and hearing about my YouTube journey, then keep on watching. <laughs> into this winter makeup routine we are also going to be talking a little bit about my youtube journey um when i did my one year anniversary video you all you know had like more questions or mentioned that you wanted to hear more about like how i really started youtube everything i used to create my videos all of that good stuff so i do want to focus on that topic with you all today while doing my makeup we are also trying out that chanel blush so that blush was 70 bucks and i want to let y'all know if it's worth going out and grabbing or should y'all leave it at the store so let's just go ahead and first start with moisture or priming my face so i am going to start with my fenty beauty primer this is the instant retouch primer i'm going to start with this we will be using the new the nars foundation today again i have been using it non-stop and mainly that's just because i want to see like if the foundation is really really worth it um when i did like the review and the wear test i felt like you can't really tell like if you really love a foundation wearing it one time so i think this is going to be my third time yeah probably my third time wearing it so i'm excited to see like if i'm going to really fall in love with it or if this is going to be one of those foundations i pull out every now and again um i already did my brows off camera um so let's go ahead and start with the youtube talk so again as you all know i started my journey a year ago um when i started uh i was very nervous i was very scared i didn't know if i would do well on camera i just really didn't know so when i first started out i definitely did film with my phone um i had got a camera probably like two months into doing youtube which was my canon g7x but i wasn't really using it um as much at first i was kind of using it for vlogging purposes but then i would sort of not use it so sometimes i was using it other times i wasn't using it um and i think that's mainly because i think it what it was it's like it offered a convenience for me to film with my phone so i've never said this before but i do edit on my phone um the reason for that is just because it's so easy right you all know i'm not the most tech savvy person in the world um so when i have tried to edit on the computer it seems pretty simple still it doesn't seem like it's hard in iMovie but certain things that i was just used to being able to do i couldn't do it and then it was taking me so much longer so i'm just like i'm getting the same thing if i edit with my phone so why don't i just continue to edit with my phone so that is what i do i do edit on my phone still even though now I record with the camera so I used the Canon G7X for all of 2021 when I was filming with the camera otherwise I was using my iPhone XS so um you do not need a lot to start YouTube when I first started making videos I bought a really cheap ring light I think that ring light probably cost me like 30 bucks at Walmart I'll try to link it if I can find it if it's still available um, and it's the kind that you just put your phone in. So that is what I had grabbed when I first started. Now, here's the thing. Ring light lighting. <laughs> I guess the lighting is better depending on your space. So I personally did not love the lighting from ring lights. And when I go back and look at my videos, I'm definitely like that lighting wasn't really like that great, right? Like it really wasn't all of that. So my opinion is obviously natural light so right now i typically film with natural light i may cut one ring light on but for the most part i use natural light now right now i would say the best time for me to film or at least start filming is sometime after like i want to say like 7 30 a.m um because right now you know it's still dark in the mornings but i prefer to record in the morning so I have recorded some videos before work, 
Um, the only thing about that is the light is questionable. So I decided I don't want to really film before work anymore. I would need to either film like right after work because I get off work around like 3.34 depending on if I have meetings. But um, again, natural light just looks the best, right? Um, so then <laughs> on the phone, like I said, it was super simple. So if I'm recording with my phone, using iMovie on my phone, I was editing videos a lot faster. Now, back then, I was not putting as much effort into my editing. Uh, <laughs> when I go back and look at like some of the, the text and fonts that I was using, I was like, that is giving very like kitty childish vibes. <laughs> and I will tell you now, like if you go back and look at some of those videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, nothing was wrong with it, but I just think it was a matter of I wanted my videos to look a certain way. And if you want your videos to look a certain way and you want it to give like a certain aesthetic, you need to be mindful of like the fonts you're using, you know, making sure you're using good pop-ups, you know, for subscribe or any of that stuff. You want to make sure you're using good stuff and not just popping, populating the word subscribe because it just, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint, it just doesn't look that good. So that was the thing for me um, with that. But yes, I still do edit on my phone today. And again, I find it very easy. Now, let me tell y'all the struggle with the recording on, or editing on your phone. A lot of time I was running out of storage. Um, I had the very small iPhone storage, which was I think 64 gigabytes, y'all. Now, obviously I've had that for a phone for a while. I had that phone prior to doing YouTube. So previously that phone was plenty enough storage for me, like plenty enough storage. I did not need any more storage or anything like that. As soon as I started doing YouTube videos, I realized, oh wow, I need more storage. <laughs> so I was very limited on how many videos or like how long my video could be. When I started out, I was definitely only doing like probably was trying to do no more than about 20 minutes um and still i still have been kind of doing that because soon as i would do a video that was longer y'all i would have to be deleting everything on my phone i mean it would be a lot and it was frustrating and you know at times when you're trying to export it and it keeps telling you there's no storage available there's no storage available and i'm just like dude are you kidding me um, so that was stressful. So that's when I kind of told myself, you know, I will make sure I do not put out any videos over like that 20 minute mark. Um, because soon as I do, I'm going to have some storage issues. Now starting out the long videos, I'm just going to be real with y'all. It's a no, because the thing is, if you're putting out a long video, it has to be entertaining. If someone sees a 30 minute, 40 minute, 50 minute hour long video on your channel, um, they're expecting like some excitement now there are some videos that may be longer like a makeup tutorial you know if i'm doing like a chit chat right now yeah those videos can be a little bit longer because you're talking about something you know it's definitely going to give the vibes that people are looking for and you know it's going to be some type of entertainment but if you have these long videos and they're not entertaining now you're kind of messing up your watch time so i've always said like when you first starting out definitely keep your videos definitely under the 30 minute mark just so you can see if people are really watching because if on a 30 minute video your watch time is three minutes that's terrible <laughs> which means you know again people are skipping around because nothing's really going on in that video so just a suggestion for me um which is why i was already kind of put in a position as to why i could not make longer videos but then i realized it actually helped me out along the way um, when I first started out, I was making four videos a week, y'all. I don't know how I was doing that. Uh, <laughs> because I just think back to that and I'm just like, wow, this is how I know that the quality wasn't exactly what I would have wanted it to be because now there's just no way I can do four videos in a week and give the quality that I really want to give at this point. Um, it's just no way. And I know it sounds like, well, girl, you did Vlogmas, but Vlogmas and vlogging is different than making sit down videos where you have to talk about one thing. You want to sound good. You want to, you know, give the high quality, have good lighting and, you know, give good edits, like all of that stuff, y'all is definitely 
tougher to create, you know, those sit down videos more so than vlogs because vlogs can be very chill. You know, sometimes when you're doing a vlog, you don't really care if the lighting is not that great because it's a vlog, you know, but if it's a sit down video, you're thinking about all of that stuff, you know, so that is my only thing I would say about the four videos yes I felt like it helped me you know get to the subscriber goal that I had really fast but y'all the four videos can't do it no more I just can't do it no more <laughs> I'm just gonna set it really quickly but yeah the four videos just you know it just went out the window for me three is a very good number um just because I'll say the average YouTubers I watch, most of them only produce about two videos in a week on average. Um, and some don't even do that. So if you're trying to find like a happy number, I would say three is the happy number because you're putting in a little bit more work than someone that's been doing YouTube long term. Um, so three videos a week, if you ask me, is a really good, a really good number and you don't feel too burnt out. Now you may have weeks where, you know, maybe you couldn't produce the three videos. Maybe you only produce two. Um, so to me, that's fine, but you know, you want to be consistent if you really want to grow fast. Um, the other thing is having a posting schedule. Now I know it's pros and cons to that because again, you may be having a week where you just can't produce, you know, that content, right? But having a posting schedule, wow. Oh my God. That was way too much setting power. Oh man, okay. But having a posting schedule just kind of helps your viewers know when to like look for content from you. I've definitely had some times where um I was supposed to post a video a certain day and I didn't and people came like looking for me. They're like, "Oh, I thought it's your posting day. You know, it's uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday." So, again, having a posting schedule is something I recommend. Um taking your time with editing, taking your time with filming. So here's one thing for me that I learned and kind of have had to work on quite a bit. Um, when I record, I typically talk fast in general, but when I record, I have learned to kind of teach myself to slow down. And I know some of y'all are still like, girl, no, you still talk fast. It's a learning process. I naturally am a fast talker. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. We are fast talking people. Um, and even though I've been in Tennessee 13 years, <laughs> it's still natural for me to talk very fast. Like being in the South has not changed that. So I've had to work on that because I don't want you all like, well, wait, what is she saying? Sometimes when I've caught myself talking super fast, I sounded out of breath. Now I'm nasally. That's another thing. A lot of people from like up North Midwest were nasally. So I am naturally kind of gonna have this like <laughs> sound to my voice that you know it's just because of where I'm from we're just we're just a little bit nasally like think of Big Sean he's from Detroit y'all realize how nasally that man sounds when he raps like that's how we sound like that's just how we sound so to make it seem better or sound a little bit better I need to talk slower so if I'm talking like this it doesn't sound as bad. I don't think it sounds bad. It's just, again, I can't control it. Like, that's where I'm from. Um, I've sounded like this my whole life. I used to work in a call center years ago. And when we, we, we would do the, uh, the little, like, reviews to, like, you know, hear my call and review my call, I would hate listening to myself. Like, I hate listening to, listening to myself because I'm just like, oh, my God, I hate my voice. But... It is what it is. I listen to myself a ton now because I have to edit these videos. So <laughs> I listen to myself all the time now and I've grown to, you know, have a love hate relationship for it. Okay. So we're bront, we're contoured and we're getting ready to use the blush soon. So I'm excited to see, you know, what that blush is going to give for bronzer. Y'all already know Charlotte Tilbury. Y'all, everything is going to be in the description box. I'm trying to stop and show you guys everything. It's just going to make this video really, really long. And I don't want to do that to y'all. I want to get to the point. Um, so back to the uh, posting schedule. So again, find a posting schedule that works for you. You don't even have to necessarily say, these are my posting days. Just post on those days consistently. And then people will realize like, okay, she likes to post on Tuesdays, Thursdays. So find whatever works for you. 
also look at your analytics and see like what's the best days to post or the best um, times to post. So on my channel, the afternoon is the best for me. I like the whole early morning post, but for my viewers, it just doesn't show enough of my viewers on YouTube early in the morning. Cause personally, since I'm a morning person, I would love to put out all my videos at 8 a.m. But <laughs> my viewers are not like on YouTube at that time. So y'all ain't gonna be watching it. So that's the only thing I would say that's like the downside of, um, you know, some channels. Some people can post videos very early and they perform well. For some reason on my channel, um, the early morning videos don't perform as well. So that's that. Also just using your YouTube analytics. And really the biggest thing y'all for your YouTube journey is just to start. Like I know um, you want things to be perfect cause y'all trust me, I am that person. I am definitely that person that's over here like, I need this to be right. I need that to be right. I need this. Trust me, just start, right? Like you're gonna get better. You're gonna regard, no matter what you do, I feel like that first video you create for YouTube, you're gonna go back at that, look at that video and be like, it was not what I thought it was. <laughs> no matter how hard you try that first time, something, whether it's the lighting, maybe it's the editing, maybe it's, you know, the topic you chose, like something about that first video, y'all, no matter how hard you go, that first video just is never what you thought it would be. <laughs> um, my first like real, real video, I think it was a get ready with me. I had so many issues because of my storage issue. Like the, I lost some of the footage. I, I did my brows on camera. I lost that footage. Um, my angle was terrible. Like it was just so many things wrong with that video. And I'm just like, wow, I, I really thought I did something here and I, I didn't. <laughs> So just just telling you from my experience, like it's not going to be perfect no matter how hard you try at first. So just try. Just do it. You know, just put it out. Just promote it. Um, as far as promoting, I know I had a question in my anniversary video about like promoting. You need to promote your videos. Nobody knows you're out there. Nobody knows you're making videos. So you have to promote no matter how hard you think, well, somebody will find me. Well, you could be waiting you know, months to get your first 20 subscribers if you do that. So you have to post and talk about your videos. Um, I'm just going to use the MAC Prep and Prime. I really like this for this time of year because of um, like, I don't know, the smell on this. And I feel like it gives me moisture. So yeah. So let's get into this blush. So if you didn't watch my unboxing, definitely go watch the unboxing I did because I unboxed some really cute LV earrings as well. But the blush comes in this really cute little pouch and you take it out and this is what the compact looks like. Looks like the gold detail, super cute. When you open it, it just looks like this on the inside. All right. And then here is that blush, super pretty. Okay. So to apply my blush, I do use the same brush I, brush I use to bronze, but I use the opposite side. So one side you see is red, one side you see is brown. So I use this side. I'm going to wipe it just a little. Any like excess is on there because I don't want the colors mixing and then I can't see the true color of this one. So we're going to pat her in there. And let's see, I'm going to place it right there. Ooh, okay. Okay, y'all, away it. Ooh, okay. So, it's going on very smoothly. See a little bit of shimmer. Let's go to this side and see. Y'all, that's pretty. So, it's not super shimmery. So, my sweetest cocoa, I think, is a little more shimmery than this. Let's see. I definitely think it's pigmented, but it also is a little bit sheer. So I like that too, because some of my blushes are very like, if you apply more than like one round, it's over with. So, okay. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. That's very pretty. Okay. Let's go one more round over here. Mm-hmm. I really like this, y'all. Like, I really like this. Beautiful. Let me look with this mirror. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty. Um, Now, would I say 
for seventy dollars is it just super worth it? It's cool. Um, I wouldn't be breaking my neck unless you just wanted to try it out. But this is pretty. Yeah, I love this color. This is a little more sheer on this side. Let me put a little more. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Definitely, I really, really like this. Now, um, again, is this something I'm telling you to race to the store to go get for seventy dollars? No, but it's super cute. It is super cute. I really, really like it. It looks similar to other blushes I have because like I said, I like that color. That color I chose is kind of like the normal color I choose for blushes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm really not mad at this y'all. I think it's cute. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some highlighter. So I'm just gonna use my Becca Chocolate Guild. This is like my go-to or either matte gold deposit. One of the two. I'm just putting it right on my Cupid's bow area. And then like just on the bridge and at the tip of my nose. That's it for highlight. I don't do too much with highlight. Um, For shadow, you know, y'all, I really don't want to do no shadow like that. But I'm going to do like a, one color or something. Because I think I am going to apply lashes today. Um, Y'all know I've been liking not putting any lashes on. But for some reason, I'm kind of in a lash mood today. So we'll put them on and see. Okay. Cool. So that's my highlighter for shadow. I think I'm going to use a color from my gingerbread um, extra spicy. This is from Tube Faced. Y'all know I use this palette all the time and I'm not using any like spectacular color. I think I'm just going to go with gingerbread glam. If y'all can see that. Yep, it's just a brown, like a ready brown. See, and I'm just going to work that in like the crease and lid space because I'm just not a big shadow person right now. I don't know. Like, unless I'm going somewhere. Y'all know I ain't going nowhere. I'm just filming today, so. Um, to me, it seems kind of pointless <laughs> to put on a bunch of shadow. Just for a little pop of color on the, the lids. It's like I said, it just, it does look better to have something. Okay, I think that's good for now. Then I'm gonna just use some eyeliner. I'm just using my normal Clinique pretty easy lining pan I'm just putting a thin line across just very thin oh you can kind of see it kind of can't see it but that's all I put on there um then I'm gonna go in with like a thin layer of mascara so I'm just using the bad gal bang this is an OG product for me I know I use this all the time so I'm just doing a light layer good enough and I'll do like a bottom layer next so guys I'm gonna go off and just put my lashes on really quick and I will come back so we can do our lips and wrap up this chat so I have my lashes on so let's go ahead and do lips and then we'll wrap up our little like YouTube journey chit chat so I'm gonna use as usual my Kat Von D Beauty or KVD Beauty <laughs> lip liner and crucifix let's use that For lip color today, I think I'm just going to go with my Velvet Lip Glide in Unlaced. Y'all know I love this from NARS. Just a cute pinky. It's kind of like a cream. It's definitely not matte. But it's not as glossy as a lip gloss. So, yeah, that's kind of what that is. And I'm just going to go around with a little more lip liner. Okay. Yep, okay, like that. So, that's our lip color. The last thing we'll just need to do is take some of my Charlotte Tilbury setting spray at the end. I do have my Fenty Beauty powder here just so I can go ahead and, you know, make sure I am matte down because y'all know I'm oily. And this foundation is not matte, so I need to make sure I am good to go. But yeah, so... 
in regards to the YouTube journey, in my opinion, what you should do is start now, okay? Start now with whatever you have. If you just have a phone, start with your phone. Don't go out and buy anything. To me, you don't have to start with a lot. You can just start with a good cell phone. So if you have a cell phone that's like a little bit older, maybe you wanna go ahead and upgrade it. Make sure you get one with plenty of storage so you don't run into some of the storage issues that I ran into because y'all, that will have you stressed out, I promise it will. Um, another suggestion I have for you is definitely to make sure that you're putting in the time, you're putting in the effort. Don't rush your content. In the beginning, like I said, I was putting out four videos a week. That was definitely too much because I was just rushing through the content. Um, even though some of those videos did perform very, very well and they still are receiving views today, I just look back and you know I know what I want for my channel and I wanna look like I put more into it. So that is my biggest suggestion to you all. Um, as far as, you know, working to get monetized and all of that stuff, obviously you have to have that thousand um, subscriber account. And then you also need to have the 4,000 watch hours. For me, I had the watch hours first before I had the subscriber account, which is not necessarily normal. A lot of people hit the thousand and then they don't have the watch hours. But for me, I had the watch hours, probably I want to say like almost three weeks to a month before I met my thousand subscribers. So keep pushing, keep putting in the work. If you're putting in the work, it's gonna show. Obviously go back, assess your old videos, which is what I do still to this day. Assess your old videos, determine what you could do to make them even better um, as you're moving and growing and you know getting used to doing YouTube. But yeah, so that's just a little about my journey. I know this conversation was all over the place, um, but it kind of gets that way when you're like doing your makeup and chatting because you're kind of like trying to remember like what you mentioned, what you didn't mention. So just know that, you know, I started off with my phone. I bought a little small ring light and I started recording and that was that. So a natural light is your friend. If you don't want to buy any lighting, cool. Go ahead and make sure you're just recording your videos when it's the best um, light outside for you. But yeah, so that's just kind of like wrapping up that chat. As far as the makeup today, um, very, very simple, easy glam. Um, I put lashes on today, I guess because I'm wearing a ponytail because my hair just needs to be washed. And I feel like with a ponytail, I'm like missing something if I don't put like lashes on. So I went ahead and put the lashes on. I do really like the Chanel blush. Again, it just comes in this really cute little pouch. You do get the samples and all of that. You get the cute packaging. So what I would say, this would make a really good like Galentine's Day gift. So for one of your girlfriends, this will make a good gift for that purpose just because it gives off the Lux vibes and it's not too crazily priced and you're gonna get like the cute samples, the cute Chanel pouch. So if you're thinking of something to get one of your homegirls and she's into makeup, definitely consider this. Even maybe your mom or whomever you're shopping for this upcoming Valentine's Day outside of your significant other, they may enjoy this. But yeah, so that is good. Um, $70, I mean, it's not life changing. So for $70, you don't have to race out and get it. But if you're like me and you like, you know, just having some, you know, luxe vibes with your makeup, then go out and try it because it is really pretty. But yeah, so I'm going to just give you guys a couple little mod shots with the look so you can see what it's giving. And that's going to wrap up this video. I do appreciate all of your love and support. Please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your family and friends. I'll see you all in my next one. Still